I can't point to any one thing. I thought about it four years ago before I ran for this last term. Um, and I can't really point to any one event. I, you know, very often I say I, I go really with my gut. And when I don't listen or I try to be too intellectual about something, it never works out quite as well as when I listen to that inner voice that we all have. And it just, I just knew. And I think if anything, it was the COVID year of staying home, of really being isolated, which uh, didn't make me as unhappy as I would have thought if somebody told me in advance, hey, for the next year, you're not going to be around a lot of people, you're not, you know, the, everything else that we all went through. So I think that year of staying home, of uh, participating only on Zoom, uh, that, that helped move me. Is it because you felt like you could rest and take time for yourself? Yeah, I think so. And I, I mean, you know, as um, much as I love politics and people, which you have to love in order to be in this business, I also have never minded being home or being quiet, let me put it that way. You know, some, I mean, I know people can't sit still for a moment. No, I'm sure you do. You know, they're constantly moving and rearranging, doing something. I can really sit quietly. So um, I think it was, you know, this is not so bad feeling. Uh, being in control of my own um, schedule. Uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, this really silly thing. I graduated Beverly Hills High School in California. And believe it or not, there are people alive who are arranging our 70th high school reunion, which amuses me in some ways. In fact, when I first, when they first reached out, you know, as they're reaching out to all the class members, I said, don't you think you're planning it a little far in advance? <laughs> so, it's like, shouldn't we do it sooner? But anyway, so the uh, I just got an email the other day with the date sometime in June. So my daughter said to me, I hope you're coming. So I said, yes, because I don't have to worry about June being the budget time where we're, you know, constantly negotiating budget stuff and having to get our budget approved by June 30th. I said, yeah, because I'm free in June. <laughs> So yes, I plan to come. So it's sort of symbolic of, I don't have to worry about those things and I'm in charge of whatever life I have left. Some that I haven't been so successful in, the um, government transparency, uh, where I've not been able to do a really good update of the Open Public Records or Open Public Meetings Act because I've never been able to get 21 votes in the Senate to do that. Uh, be, and, and that too, it always mystifies me. The public elected officials who have this kind of antagonism toward the public. And I often say, I, look, I sat on my local council, I sat at meetings that went on to all hours of the night listening to people who sometimes were annoying <laughs> to listen to, you know, so I'll give that to people. Sometimes the public is annoying, but that's the business we're in. And I believe that everything that we do, with the exception of a few carefully crafted exceptions to protect people's privacy, obviously, or legal cases, everything we do should be in the open. And I have never been able to convince 20 others <laughs> of my colleagues of that because, don't forget, we still have people who serve on their 
well, our mayors of their communities grandfathered into the law we passed against dual office holding. Um, the League of Municipalities, the Clerks Association, all of the uh, above have always weighed in and changed the goalposts every time we got close. I not only recommend but encourage, but also encourage them to keep balance in their lives. You know, you can't, uh, I've often said you can't have it all, all of the time. Something always gives. The important dance recital comes up and you go to your kid's dance recital and miss the meeting. Mm -hmm. Or it's of uh, urgency. What did I uh, see some big leader, female leader being interviewed? who said her son never forgave her for their tickets to a Yankee game that she had to cancel. <laughs> oh, I know. It was the uh, person who was uh, Bob Dole's chief of staff oh. who became known as the 101st senator. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so there's always sacrifice on one side or the other. So keeping the balance is difficult keeping your home life separate, keeping kids out of harm's way so they don't get into trouble for something you did, or their getting into trouble becomes magnified because of who you are. Mm. So it, it all takes a little bit of a balancing act. Mm. But I wouldn't, I, you know, when I look back, I said to myself, where else could I have been in a place where I met so many wonderful, interesting, adventuresome people and had an opportunity to actually make some changes, yeah. to actually influence what's going on in our world.